Hello everyone, welcome to the video on neurohumoral transmission. Let us understand this process completely. Now, neurohumoral transmission is a process in which a neuron transmits its information to another neuron or to other peripheral tissues. Neurons release certain chemicals known as neurotransmitters. So they transmit the information from one neuron to another neuron or from one neuron to another tissues. Now humoral word means body fluids. So all these neurotransmitters are released in body fluids hence it is called as humoral. So neurohumoral transmission or simply known as neurotransmission. There are certain steps involved in this process. The first step is known as synthesis and storage of neurotransmitters. All the neurotransmitters synthesize their neurotransmitter and store at the end of their neuron. Neurotransmitters are stored in vesicles. Now synthesis depending upon the neurotransmitters various steps are involved. In case of noradrenaline synthesis, the synthesis starts from tyrosine. Tyrosine is converted to dopa, dopa is converted to dopamine, dopamine is converted to noradrenaline and this noradrenaline is stored inside the vesicle. In case of acetylcholine, the synthesis is very simple. Choline combines with acetyl-CoA and forms acetylcholine which is stored inside a vesicle. There is a logic why all these neurotransmitters is stored inside a vesicle. In the neuron, there are certain metabolizing enzymes are there. So to escape from the metabolism from these enzymes, the neurotransmitter will be stored inside the vesicle. In case of adrenergic system, there is an enzyme called monoamine oxidase which is present inside the neuron. If the neurotransmitter is freely available, the monoamine oxidase will metabolize these neurotransmitters. So to escape from this metabolism, it stores inside a vesicle. Now, Whenever there is an action potential is there, that when action potential reaches the nerve terminal, in the vesicle fuses with nerve terminal and inside the vesicle, the neurotransmitter is released into, in, out of this neuron. Now, the, the space between a neuron and neuron is known as synaptic space or synaptic cleft. Or a space between a neuron and peripheral tissue is known as just new, uh, post neuronal junction. So the neurotransmitter is either released into synap synaptic cleft or it is released into post neuronal junction. Now once the neurotransmitter is released it will be acting on peripheral receptors, receptors which are present either on neuron or present on tissues and organs. So it acts on receptors or it may act on the same neuron also. It is known as auto auto receptors. In case of adrenergic system you have alpha 1 receptors which are present on the same neuron. So they cause feedback inhibition. So either they act on postsynaptic receptors or auto, auto receptors or it may get diffused or in certain cases they may get metabolized. In case of acetylcholine, once it is released into the synaptic cleft, it acts on the receptors and some, some molecules of the acetylcholine will be metabolized by acetylcholine esterase enzyme. The other thing, some of the neurotransmitters may be reuptaken back into the neuron. It is possible with the help of Pro proteins known as reuptake proteins. You have serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, all of them has got separate reuptake proteins are there. And these proteins are what uh, inhibited by certain drugs. So this is what happens. So neurotransmitter is synthesized, stored, released due to action potential, acts on the receptors or taken back into the neuron or get metabolized. Now, once a neurotransmitter is released, it affects on the postsynaptic neuron could be excitatory or inhibitory. They are known as excitatory uh, postsynaptic potential or inhibitory postsynaptic potential. Understand these words. See, usually the axon has got certain potential. It is known as minus 70 millivolt inside to the exterior. That means inside the axon there is a negative potential is that it is minus 70 millivolt. Now, excitation means when the negative potential is converted into positive that is called as depolarization. So excitatory neurotransmitters convert the negative potential to positive potential it is called as depolarization. Example aspartate, glutamate are the neurotransmitter which cause excitatory postsynaptic potential. Inhibitory postsynaptic uh, potential means the negative minus 70 furthermore increases into, into higher negative uh, potential. In other words it causes hyperpolarization. GABA is, GABA will cause inhibitory postsynaptic potential. So this is what is about neurohumoral transmission. Thank you.